Hey guys, hello guys, hello everyone. Hey guys, hey guys, hello people. Hey guys, hey guys, what's up people? What's with all these remakes? It seems like 2010 is like the year of the remakes. You know, every movie from the 80s is being remade. <sighs> anyway, here's my later review of one that I managed to catch recently. And I am around Elm Street. You open this door, Kruger! What do you think I did? I didn't do it You guys should probably be familiar with the basic premise of the original in which a child murderer was killed and now exists in the supernatural dream world in which he hunts down children through their dreams and if they die in their dreams they die for real. This version is much more of a cleaned up polished version in which things aren't so campy and th they're more serious, the, the kills are more serious, the atmosphere is more serious but overall it's just not scary. Now for the record before I continue I'm gonna state that I did manage to skim through the original before I got to see this so I will be doing some comparisons. Now this is a remake produced by Platinum Dunes which is run by our dear old friend Michael Bay. Him along with the company also produced the remakes of A Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Friday the 13th. So you should expect all the basics. Pretty neat little kills, a dull story and some pretty bad acting. All three are pretty much present in this film. Kicking off from best to worst in the acting would have to be Jackie Earl Haley. He is one of my favorite actors after his performance in Watchmen and his Oscar nominated performance in Little Children and I've got to say that his despite the fact that Robert Englund will always be Freddy Krueger forevermore after his track record Jackie Earl Haley's performance is covers the menace. He doesn't really execute the humor very well with his punchlines but he is very menacing and he his portrayal of freddy is the only one who actually makes me want to makes me want to be freddy for halloween God. Here I come. now even though he has claimed numerous times that the makeup was more to be grounded on reality and to make it look more like a burn victim i think they kind of messed up i don't know it's maybe around the eyes maybe it's around the fact that the mouth doesn't really move along very well with the words that he's saying I don't know. And in second place, with the only other good performance in this film, would have to be Kyle Garner, aka the kid who always seems like he's gonna fall asleep or cry. He was surprisingly good. Everybody else was just your basic standard acting from teenagers. All of the other cast members, the blonde girl, the other boyfriend, the girl reprising, trying to reprise the role of Nancy from the original, they all had that one little scene. All three of them had one scene where they were just flat out horrible and the rest was meh. It wasn't really bad, but there was just one scene out of all of their performances in which they just having a slight possibility of getting a nomination for a Razzie. One of the things that we give much credit to the original is the fact that it was indeed scary because it touched upon some uh, a concept that no other horror movie has touched upon and that would have to be falling asleep. After everybody watched the original, people were terrified to go to sleep, alright? There were numerous kids who just wouldn't want to go to sleep after watching this movie. The same really can't be said about the remake. You will have no problem falling asleep after watching this. In fact, you might even fall asleep during the movie because you might just be bored. When it comes to horror films, I expect to be scared by the ambiance and the atmosphere of the film. To actually make you feel terror within you. This movie relies on the infamous jump scare, which is used so many times that about the second, halfway through the second or maybe the third act, it starts to get really dull and you can see the jump scares from a mile away. I will however admit that I did jump once or twice during the first two or three jump scares in the film, but it just gets repetitive and repetitive and they just milk it in this movie to the point where we can see it coming. This might sting a bit. Despite the fact that it is very likely that you're not even going to remember that you watched this movie about an hour or two hours after you have seen it, it is an enjoyable film. And after watching this, I could kind of tell that they remade this with the best of intentions. They were trying to pay homage to Wes Craven's classic. Especially with all the recycled shots like the glove coming out of the bathtub water. Those little bits were fine. It was nice to see that they were paying homage to the original. But of course, being that it is now the new era of technology, they have to incorporate CGI into these re recycled shots. The type of CG that just looks worse than the original. Still, I wouldn't feel too comfortable paying $7.50 to go watch this. So I'm going to have to give this a 7.2 out of 10, which is a C-. minus. If you could spare an hour and a half or maybe a matinee ticket and you just want to reminisce 
go ahead and check out Nightmare on Elm Street. You might enjoy it, you might not, I don't know. Now really quick, I'm gonna talk about one little spoiler here, so if you do not wanna get spoiled, even though it doesn't really matter for this film, please stop watching. Or if you just simply just don't care, or if you have seen the film, then feel free to watch. Now I have not seen the ending to Texas Chainsaw Massacre re remake. I have, however, seen the ending to the Friday the 13th remake, and obviously I have seen this film, both of which are produced by Platinum Dunes and Michael Bay. Is it just me, or are all the remakes from Platinum Dunes come with this really weird, abrupt ending in which it feels like they just ran out of film? There's a jump scare, there's the now traditional, oh no, it's not over, the killer's still alive ending, and right when the girl is screaming, the the film just stops and it cuts and the, the, the end credits start rolling. Friday the 13th had this, Nightmare on Elm Street had this, and if you guys have seen the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake, please let me know in the comments. I mean, I don't know if those kinds of endings are effective or not, I mean, should I start ending my review?